Okay, there we go. I think. Silly thing. Down. That's what I want to do. There we go. Hold on. Okay, anyway. Um, this weekend in North Football. How do we do? In the time that I've been gone, let me see what happened, what happened, what happened, what happened. A lot of things happened. A lot of things happened. Okay. A lot of things happened. What happened? Life happens. That's what happened. That's the first thing. Monday night games. Those happened too. Why there were so many in the past three weeks, I have no idea. And the sad thing is there's a couple more due to circumstances, you know, that's out of the arena's control. Remember, you know, some of these teams are the third and fourth tenants in these arenas. So, you know, yeah, there's going to be some more Monday night games down the line. And then March Madness, Cross, you know, WrestleMania, that's been taking up a lot of my time as well. You know, we cover you know, more lacrosse, watching more lacrosse this year in the college game than I have last year. Uh, March Madness, even though I don't really care for it as much this year for some reason, even though I should have because it was crazy. But I talked about that last night. You know, it is what it is. Um, so the NAL, let's start with them. Let's start with the NAL, the new rule changes, um, the halo rule. You know, the kidney team can't go past the five-yard line until the ball is touched. The rebound nets, I've seen them. I've seen them. We've seen them today. We saw them. You know, Albany's been posted about them. They, there's been some posts about them. They're back. So that ball is live if it hits the nets at all. The one-minute timing rule, if it's like a 25-point lead, you know, you can kneel it down. And then there's the substitution check-in. You have to – so it's basically like basketball where you have to check in, you know, prior to, you know, going in with the officials. There's many free agents, several refuse to report. It's like Jonathan Bain, Larry Beaver, Sean Lockett, you know, just all sorts of guys. Uh, Fayetteville had their new unis out. They cut like 15 guys on cut day, which was this past Saturday night. Orlando's got some new turf. Ticket sales, from what I've seen so far, they're not, you know, they're not great. But the, the people are getting the word out there. You know, the people are getting the word out there. And then in the indoor football league right now, you know, uh, same old, same old with the IFL right now. If I can move, yeah, I can move myself up here. I can move myself up here and just state, you know, the standings. Um, I'm not going to do the weekly scores or anything because it's been three weeks. Everybody has now played a game. Um, there's a lot of observations to go through, like Drew Powell getting hurt. The Rattlers did sign Chris Dixon, but it may not be Arizona. That's the dominant team out west. Wild, wild west right now. As you can clearly see, you know, a glut of teams are one and one. Tucson, again, they just played their first game last night, so 1-0. and And then San Diego at 0-2. In the East, you know, it's Frisco, Massachusetts, Quad City, all at the top. And then, you know, you got the expansion team, Tulsa, obviously, who only played one game, didn't go too well. And then Iowa, Sioux Falls, you know, kind of just, they're not the same teams that they kind of are, that they kind of used to be. And then Great Bay, you know, beat up on Iowa, which is crazy. They have an offense. The Blizzard have an offense. They just don't have a defense. Tulsa has a defense. They just need an offense, really. Uh, you know, Duke City, turf issues. Uh, like, is that supposed to be? Is that supposed to be? You know, at Rio Rancho, probably not. Um, it is what it is. Betting lines. During games are still insane. I like who bets the over and under on an indoor football game. You must be crazy. And I literally, and I literally, we literally just got a new sub today. So happy to number two hundred and one. 
it, it's it's insane. It's insane that you can make some money off of doing the indoor arena game. And then I never want to hear the coaches poll ever again. That sounds cringe. Please do not don't don't call don't call this the number one versus the number three team in the please stop. This is not college football. This is this is indoor football. You could just say this is Arizona versus Bay Area. Don't say preseason number one, preseason number three. We do not care about the coaches poll like that. We really do not. We do not. We do not. Stop it, Todd. Stop it. Stop it. I'm begging you. In the CIF, really, um, Gillette, the Mustangs have one of the ugliest logos I think I've ever seen. But they're, they're a contender now. You know, when you look at the standings, you have Gillette, Omaha, you know, both undefeated, Sioux City, Salina, both at 3-1, and one, Billings at 2-2. Two and two. And then the bottom three, Topeka, Rapid City, and Southwest Kansas are all going to fight for that last playoff spot. Because remember, six teams, six teams make the CIF playoffs. The streams are still pretty bad, but it's okay. And then Rapid City's gone through some off-the-field issues, you know, players getting cut again and yada, yada, yada. It is what it is. Um, we've kind of discussed this on that collab I was talking about the other day. Um, Texas Pride. They are not the Pride anymore. They're the Prime, the Texas Prime. Prime Weights, same guy that beat a couple CIF teams. Keith Russ is still involved, by the way. So, you know, that's kind of the iffy part. So remember, man bailed on some CIF teams last year. And the AIFA may still be their home, but they did confirm that they'll be playing in Garland at the Curtis Colwell Center, at least. They did say that in that live stream they that I saw the other day. Um, I don't have much else to say about that. That, the Arena League, that one, the fake one, you know, with the Dallas Outlaws, the Waco Tornadoes, that one's probably dead. Um, I found this out on Twitter um, from a player that was attempting to get into the league. Same thing as the NGL, I'm not going to launch the United Football League or whatever you want to call it, Joe McClendon's scam of the week. And speaking of that, you know, there's – Several more players that seem to have gotten scammed by Joe. Please do not fall for his tricks. Don't don't do it. I'll I'll, I'll go deck him in the face myself if I have to. Because I mean that that that's just sick that, that this man continues to scam people. But yeah, that arena league probably did. The other one with Tim Brown looks like it's going to be a go. Um, they didn't. This arena league didn't really post anything. You know. Didn't really post any dates or any venues or anything actually remotely worthy. You couldn't tell if they had events scheduled on, you know, they were supposed to go at the Mesquite Arena. You know, again, I live over in this area now, so, you know, I had to ask, you know, if I had to ask somebody, you know, it probably didn't happen. I'm just going to be keep it real 100. It probably didn't happen, but, I mean, who knows, because I wasn't going to go out there and investigate that nonsense. And then the AWFC, Boise and Oregon took care of business easily against Sin City, some random team, and then the Las Vegas Kings of the AIFA took care of business, took care of business. Now, the AWFC, again, remember, only has six games that count. The others are just a bunch of random contests throughout the season, staying all the way from April to July, which is kind of long for a three-team league, but whatever. It is what it is. You know, can't can't say I didn't blame them for trying. And then the AAL2, real quick, again, they, there's the teams all right there. There's a bunch of scheduling quirks. There's a um, Roku YouTube-type deal. And you know some teams are going to have streams, others are not. Let me uh, let me move myself back down here. Some teams are going to have streams, some aren't. Uh, the Alabama Empire is going to play um, play Georgia Lina on May twenty eighth, and everybody has their schedules and stuff like that now. Like uh, Steel City, the Houston Maulers, the ones in Pennsylvania. Don't get it twisted. And the Georgia Lina they have like seven games, and then. 
you know, Eastern Shore, the United Firepower, Jersey, the Maryland Eagles, the Maryland Warriors, they have eight games each. And then the Cali Gold has just one actual game, and then the others are against AWFC teams. So, you know, there's that. And then the Great Lakes Arena Alliance, um, real quick to round this out here, you know, um, Battle Creek, they took West Michigan to the limit for the first time in a while. It seemed, you know, back on March the 18th. Uh, in that doubleheader this weekend, Oregon, not Oregon, Ohio, they played Battle Creek. Um, they also beat the Houston Maulers in the AAL. Uh, West Michigan, obviously, they beat Southern Michigan, you know, that Ohio Southern Michigan game was inside a soccer complex. If you're wondering, and I have no idea what happened to the Chicago power schedule. It is gone. It was there for like a few seconds. They've been post the power has been posting about players getting signed and stuff like that. You know, it is what it is there. Cool. Um, but you kind of need to completely lock in, you know, update your website, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, Update that schedule, you know, any anything, anything really. And yeah, that's that's it. That's all I got. Um, I probably missed something. I know I probably missed something, but for the most part, it looks like a lot happened in the past three weeks. So I'll see you all next Sunday night. As there are a couple, as the weekend really, actually, it only is the Saturday games and Sunday games this time. As the NAL kicks off this weekend, CIF's in full swing, and now everybody in the IFL has played at least one game. So now things are cooking for the th- for the big three. Y'all take care. I'll see y'all tomorrow when we talk some college across and the NLL as well.